Hey guys, DM Mike here for the second series of this channel. I wish there was kind of a cool way to be more cryptic about what this is going to be. You know, with the Link's Awakening Let's Play, there's a intro role with the cool cutscene. You know, you get the animation and then the 3D stuff with Marin picking up Link on the shore. But there isn't really anything here to do that. The game kind of jumps into it. This is the Galaxy release of the 3D... Mario compilation that was put out on Switch last March 2020. A great year. And this is a game for me that's been a lot of a lot of fun, even though for some people it can be kind of polarizing. I think this is a fantastic game. Is it the best 3D Mario? Probably not. But for me, this is a game that carries a lot of nostalgia. And it was one that really sealed the deal for how special the Wii was for me as a console. I believe the original version of this game came out, I'm assuming copyright 2007, that'd make sense, wouldn't it? So, you know, in my teenage years was when I first got a hold of this one. And I just remember having a, a lot of fun with it and it making a big impact. So hopefully you guys enjoyed as much as I do. The series is probably going to run a little longer than Link's Awakening just by virtue of this game being longer in terms of hours needed to complete it. But we are going to sort of 100% it. We're going to get all 120 stars as per usual in most of the 3D Marios. However, there is an alternative option once you do that, that unlocks that you can essentially replay the game again. But it's the same game. Twice. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to play the game twice. It's just once. That's good enough, I think. And I think you guys will enjoy that. But anyway, enough babbling. Um, let's get started. So this is kind of different in that they they made this game with sort of Wii motion controls in mind. Sort of not really. You can play this game... Two different ways. You can use the Joy-Cons, which act as the Nunchuck and the Wiimote, respectively, since this is on Switch, obviously. They did the best that they could to make it one-to-one. -one. Or you can use a Pro Controller, which is what I'm going to be doing, which is a little weird, but I'm still not a fan of using the Joy-Cons when I play as I record, because it kind of requires a little bit more action, which throws off my voice a little bit. And I'm going for audio clarity, as much as visual clarity in this game, for all of my recordings. So anyway... Using the Pro Controller, there are, are gyros within it that when you move them around on the screen, it will take the pointer and do that as well. It's kind of obnoxious later on because it requires you to use it in certain ways like to collect star bits or to move the cursor around, but it's not a huge deal. So we're just going to pick the first one. We will create our game file. And I'm thinking I'm a Mario boy, so let's go ahead and use Mario as our icon, sure. Favorite color is red after all, not sure if you guys could figure that out. So we're going to go ahead and play this file. Now, you are able to play this game with an additional person, but the reality is that it's not technically a co-op game. Playing it with somebody else just allows them to have tertiary functions of being able to benefit you. But anyway, let's go ahead and listen to this very scintillating story. It's what Mario's all about after all. All right, sounds like Peach might have a tasty treat for us. If you guys remember back to Mario 64, it was a cake. So Mario loves him some nice cake. The 
feeling of playing this game again when it first came out for the Switch, the re-release, uh, it just kind of brought back a lot of good feelings. You know, when you're a kid, times are simpler, hopefully, for you. And there's a lot of positive nostalgia that you can have. And that's kind of what this game does for me. I really enjoyed it when I played it the first time. And just seeing it, you know, re-rendered in 1080p and being able to play it on modern consoles on the go is just a lot of fun. And I, I know this was kind of polarizing for people to... You know, the game wasn't essentially, like, remastered. They just kind of upscaled it, but it still looks fantastic. It plays really well, and it's one of my favorite games, so why not? We're going to get started. So, as I was saying, the cursor on the screen is being controlled by the motion of my Pro Controller. I am just wiggling that up and down, and that's what causes it to do that. So the controls are pretty simple. So far, we don't really have a ton that we can do yet. We can do our jumping with B or A, you know, whichever fits your fancy for now. The controls will be adapted and changed as things get going. But for now, we're just having some fun. We can long jump with the Z, L, and B button and jump ourselves right into a cutscene. Now, I know that this game is like cartoony, you know, comic mischief. But if you think about it, like if this happened in some sort of like legitimate scenario where you've got like aircrafts shooting rockets and stuff that, you know, civilians and whatever, that's pretty terrifying. I'd be pretty scared. Cool of Nintendo to try to sneak that into a children's game, but you know, whatever. I really enjoy the toads in their capes. Also, apparently Bowser can shoot electricity out of his hands. I don't know if anybody knew that was a thing. And summon UFOs. So if you think that you've made it in life, you haven't because you can't shoot electricity out of your hands or summon UFOs. So maybe come off your high horse a little bit, everybody, all right? So in the process of shooting those weird beams and rockets at everybody, they froze some of the toads in these weird crystals. So we got to figure out what we can do to help these guys out. Things are getting a little out of hand. Hey, thanks. Figured that out. Without GPS, love me a good GPS. Don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> what did this toad say? Going to my happy place. That's right. We should all try to take that advice. Just go to your happy place sometimes, guys. Especially when your entire life is being catastrophically turned upside down by foreign invaders shooting rockets at your hometown. So yeah, you can get a cool little, uh, little view of Prince Pe Princess Peach's castle here. A little smaller in size from the Super Mario 64 days. That is a massive UFO. It's bigger than the castle. That is heckin' big. Just gonna go ahead and laser cut its way around the surrounding perimeter. That didn't look very good. You know, you could have figured that it would be able to calibrate those beams in a circle, but it looked like it was just kind of winging it. So much for alien technology being advanced. So instead of just taking Princess Peach and 
Throwing around the airship as per usual, Bowser gets a little extra and decides that he wants to take the whole castle for himself. Some exceptional voice acting by Charles Martinet. Are, are we dead? Is this heaven? Okay, so that Marshmallow Man turned into a rabbit. Let's play. Oh, that's what we're doing. Very good. Well, we already did that. I explained that. Thanks. I guess we're supposed to follow this guy around. I wonder what he wants. One of the things that I... I think I said this already, but one of the things that I like most about this game and that I think makes me cherish it is just the music. I know that Nintendo has a track record for having incredible compositions in their games, but this is just one of the ones that, you know, I, I was at a certain point in my life when I played this that, uh, you know, things were peaceful, calm, not a whole lot to worry about. You know, when you're younger, like I said, um, you have those moments growing up when things just feel simpler, even if they're maybe not. And this game kind of evokes those types of memories for me. That's why I think I like it the most. So I'm probably going to be talking about those types of feelings throughout this game is just kind of the way that it makes me feel. This game is definitely less intensive in terms of things me, I'm me needing to explain. So there's probably going to be more storytelling, which is what I hopefully want to use this channel more for because I think it's more enjoyable. I think that let's playing of just explaining what you're seeing on screen is kind of boring. So I'm going to try not to do that and just share more about my personal life and have more fun with nostalgia and, you know, telling stories. All right, so we're being bribed. We are being forced to play a game in order to find out where we are. On some sort of planet, it appears, with its own type of gravity. There are coins in this game, so there is a financial component. Pipes. We can take one and go at the other eye. We have discovered one of the rabbits. I'm assuming that's what these guys are. They kind of look like the guys from Super Mario 64. And that rabbit turns back into... It looks like a peep. I don't know. So you get the, you get the hint. When you catch one, they'll give you the hint on where another one is. In that very cryptic red text. I'm sure you guys had trouble figuring that out. I wasn't sure if anybody was going to really pick up on that. So you can take that little path through the planet all the way down. That's kind of fun. But the game doesn't want us to go down that one. That's a no-go. But in the process of going in there, we found ourselves another rabbit. Tricks are for kids. So that is... Bunny number two. And we are instructed to avoid the grass, which is the opposite of what we're going to do. So there's our final friend. We're going to go ahead and scoop up these little star bits. That's what these little candy crystals look looking like things are. Those are star bits. So we're going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop here and grab our final friend. Help their mama, huh? Are we about to meet somebody's parents? We haven't even been on a first date. It's a big ask.
Okay. Gateway to the starry sky, huh? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love space. I am absolutely a an astronomy stan, as we say in the business. We see some ethereal figure up here. Who could this be? Another another Nintendo main character? Rosalina, huh? So for those of you who have played Super Smash Brothers or Super Mario 3D World, Mario Kart 8, the Rosalina of the... I think Rosalina's in Mario Kart 8. Maybe she's not. I don't know. I haven't played that in a while. If I'm wrong, whatever. But that's... This is the introduction of Rosalina. This is where she enters the franchise as a playable character for some games. And we're learning now that these little gooey guys are Lumas. And he just apparently absorbs himself and or we absorb him into our body. So like I said, you can shake the Joy-Con or you can spin with Y, which is kind of weird to get used to, but it's not that bad. So now we've been possessed by a Easter peep. And we're after something called the Grand Stars. So we will see what we can do to help this spooky lady to help find our special one, AKA Princess Peach or whoever you can, you can implement whoever you want. You know, if you're Mario in this game, who is your special one? Who is somebody that you're fond of that you care about with all your heart and soul? Make that your special one. So let's keep going. So once again, a little bit more in the realm of mechanics. You can break those crystals with the Y button, or you can shake like the game is trying to force me to do. And blast off into our very first starred planetoid. I guess I should say this is different because we were already on a planetoid, so that was technically the first one. But this is the first one that's actually got enemies. So we, here we have our Goombas. You can spin into them, which gives you a coin. Usually if you spin into them, it sends them flying because they're stunned. That's okay. So you can die if you fall into the middle of the planet. You don't want to do that. You can break open the crystals here and get yourselves a coin. So let's see what happens if we just run into one of these guys. Oop! Didn't want to do that. So collecting coins refills your life. You do have three, three sections of a health bar here. If you crouch with ZL and then you hit the B button, you can do a backflip. That's cool. So we have we have earned an additional Mario. Our sense of self has expanded to two. That's excellent. And we're collecting these star chips. This is a frequent mechanic of this game. Star chips are found in quantities of five. There are other collectibles in this game that will be found in quantities of five, but star chips are the one they start you with. And this is one of the most difficult puzzles of the game to be able to navigate this small planet and find five things that are very closely stacked together. So as we get aggressively attacked by that meteor, now we know what the dinosaurs felt like. We're gonna blast off again. Collect ourselves a coin for safekeeping and keep navigating this planet. This is just so much fun. This is a game that I think the reason why I enjoy this game so much is just because it does have complexities to it. It does have elements that make it indicative of a AAA Mario title from Nintendo. But at the same time, it's not so tough that you can't enjoy it. That you can't just kind of turn your brain off for a little bit and have some fun. That's one of the things that makes creating Let's Plays a little difficult, because I am not a pro at these games, just as I've said numerous times. But 
one of the tough things about recording video is having to try to commentate and play at the same time. Because you want to be able to put out a good product. You know, you want to be able to show people the deets, but... Yeah, we gotcha. We gotcha. So, one of the things that's tough is just being able to play at a higher level so you don't look a complete fool. Alright, there's the stunt mechanic. So, running into that Goomba after you give him the old dipsy doodle. We'll stun him. We are the number one stunner. And this is a different type of warp star. The two that we saw originally, the ones that were a little larger, those are launch stars. And the smaller ones, which are just kind of little boosts to a different planetoid, those are sling stars. Both very useful, both required to get to most places. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. And one thing that I recommend doing throughout the course of this game, because you're going to need them, is getting a ton, a ton of star bits. So now we've got a super massive Goomba here. Um, this is kind of scary, right? Let's see if we can stun him. Oh, or just run right into him. That's good, right? Oh, we got a two for one right there. Now, the size dynamics there don't really make sense. If we're able to stun a small Goomba in the same way that we're able to stun a large one, you would think that that little Goomba would just like instantly explode if we got near it. But, you know, Mario physics are not meant to be critiqued and analyzed too much or your brain will explode just like that Goomba did. Now that is a little cryptic and creepy. You ever had somebody that you don't know just be like, hey, we've been waiting for you. That's like the beginning of a, of a murder film. We've got this crazy machine here that has captured this grand star and it's sapping it of its energy and we have to stop it. Now, this is not timed. Do not feel pressured to do this at any sort of specific interval. Now, what you're going to have to do is a pretty tough puzzle. There are these little yellow panels on the floor that are being walked over by these lasagna noodles. You just got to run over it. And you can even do it from the side. It's kind of tough to have to worry about. I mean, it's not, sorry, it's not tough. You know, you don't feel so concerned about the electricity that are on the other ends. They're not going to work. They're not going to get you unless you're being a fool like me. I'm just going to run around these ones. Turn everything from yellow to blue. Oh, thanks. It tells me that right as I complete the puzzle. The very daunting puzzle. Did you guys figure that out? So let's... Uh... All right, so now we're just being told what to do. We're brand new here to this world with these weird fluffy boys and or girls who, I don't know, Lumas can be whatever they want. And we're being told that we have to go do this. So I guess, uh, I guess we'll do it, but let's see if we can do it in style. Haven't you ever wanted to float around next to a giant sheriff's badge? The real grand star is all of you watching this video. You're my grand stars. And don't you forget it. We're having a good heckin' time. So we're being transported to this strange hub. We just cause nuclear fusion at the beginning of wherever this is. So there's going to be a lot of radioactive materials floating around. Not sure how many Ronjins that is, but just keep your distance. Those gamma rays are dangerous, everybody. So that is our first of 120 upcoming stars. we got 119 to go in the Gateway Galaxy with our high score of 21. That's one of my favorite numbers, so how lucky. 52. Also, it's not a favorite number, but that's okay. 
But we did discover a new galaxy over here in the terrace. So this little map is going to be really helpful over time. This sound is very annoying, but that will tell you in advance where you're supposed to go to start making progress. So I don't know what a class six star is. I'm not an astronomer, but I'm assuming it's probably on the weaker end of the spectrum. And Luma's were having trouble surviving, so look at that. We kept an entire species intact. Maybe they eat radiation. Maybe that's what starbits are. Maybe starbits are actually radiation. And this is the Comet Observatory. This is going to be our hub for this game, where Rosalina resides. Excellent voice acting from whoever Rosalina's voice actress is. She really sold that, please. So there's a few domes in this game, maybe five, maybe six, and within them are the galaxies that we will have to traverse. You open up more as you collect more stars, kind of like the doors in Mario 64. So that's pretty neat. All in the quest for that power star. So we're going to save our game. How about it? So that's kind of the gist of the game so far, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. I know this episode was a little bit introductory and tutorial-y, but you got to get that out of the way. So I'm going to try to get a few stars every episode, obviously. If I play things right and I, you know, make some good progress. I could hopefully get four to five per episode, maybe more depending upon how well I'm doing or not. Some of the later stars can get pretty arduous once you get past the kind of the, the normal section of the game prior to like the quote unquote final boss, then things get a little hectic and kind of take a little bit more time and investment. But so far, so good. Next episode, we're going to start kicking off getting stars from the terrace, our first dome in the game. And we'll keep having some more fun. So guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.